Free speech is under fire on college campuses in America. A federal judge was shouted down and heckled during his speech at Stanford Law School, and it was caught on camera. Well, the judge has described the incident as a bizarre therapy session from hell. Brody Carter has the story. You've invited me to speak here, and I'm being heckled nonstop. And I'm just asking for an administrator to sign the That's an An invitation for Federal Circuit Court Judge Kyle Duncan to speak at Stanford University about COVID, Twitter, and guns instead ended up in a free-for-all. Your advocacy, your opinions from the bench land as absolute disenfranchisement of their rights and does land. One of the more surprising moments came as the law school's associate dean of diversity and inclusion joined in heckling the judge. Judge Duncan describes the incident as a bizarre therapy session from hell. While the judge and others have called for the associate dean's removal, both the law school's dean and the university president apologized, which led to another student protest. This time inside the law dean's classroom, their message is seen on these signs. Counter speech is free speech. Now, of course, protesters are always able to peacefully protest other places on campus. But when you are in a speaking event, it's effectively a closed forum and you cannot be uh, shouting someone down and just saying, as the protesters here are doing, uh, that it's just counter speech. It's censorship. Alex Morley with Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression calls the incident concerning and worries about the future of free speech in America. Free speech is not a right wing value or a leftist value. It's not something that one side or another, one religion or another can claim. It's something that belongs to all of us uh, and that we can use as a tool to work together uh, to see the changes that we want to see in society to advocate for them. Prior to the judge's appearance, Associate Dean of DEI, Tyrion Steinbach, sent this email to Stanford students, which states, Duncan has repeatedly threatened health care and marginalized minority communities. However, this threat to free speech on college campuses is not an isolated event. Last March, future attorneys at Yale disrupted a panel, ironically discussing a case on free speech. Shouting down Alliance Defending Freedom CEO Kristen Wagner. They were pounding on the walls, blocking the exits, um, and disrupting the event throughout. It, it was very unfortunate and alarming and volatile. We want people to understand that free speech is something that can work for them, whatever their values are. Uh, my specialty on college campuses, we are working hard to get students, you know, students on college campuses in many ways are are some of our future leaders, and we want right. them to bring those values into uh, into society when they graduate. Brody Carter, CBN News. This is oddly reminding me of struggle sessions and the revolutions of, of China, where they would literally uh, hang placards over people's head and then just shout at them. Uh, and it was, it was led primarily out of their campuses too. This, this isn't new in, in, in intellectual life, but it has been a spark point for a continued debate about the real value of free speech. And that real value is in the, in the marketplace of ideas where everyone has the freedom to express their ideas without fear of intimidation, without fear of being shouted down. And in that marketplace of ideas, the best ideas always emerge. It's as, as old as the philosophy of synthesis, where you have a thesis and antithesis, and then you find synthesis. And it just seems to work better that way, where you have free and open society. We don't want to have a cultural revolution. It's just, it's, it's not. These struggle sessions aren't going to do anybody any good. If you want to advance an agenda, just speak clearly and, and, and have that right without the fear of intimidation and while, without somebody just trying to shout you down and eliminate your voice. The tremendous irony here is that you have a dean of inclusion trying to exclude a speaker. And that happening in a law school environment where everybody should already be schooled on a wonderful Supreme Court ruling regarding free speech in America. 
It had to do with the Nazi Party. If you can imagine the Nazi Party trying to have a march in Illinois, that's the case. The Supreme Court said even extremely offensive speech, speech that seems to be designed to trigger reactions and even trigger violent reactions. If you have uh, the right to have that speech, that's the whole freedom of speech that is guaranteed in our Bill of Rights. So the Supreme Court said, yes, you have to let the Nazis march and carry their placards and uh, have their moment uh, on the main street of a, a public, uh, on a public street. So in this kind of environment, can we please return to that? Even offensive speech has a right to be heard, and it's in the competition of ideas that we get to the best results.